All right, guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. And today I have a surprise for you guys. Let's see what is in the box. Man, they waterproof this package with as much tape as they put on it. I think that's their goal. Here we go. Okay. Let's see what we have inside. Okay. I have right here. I have the frenzy. I don't even know how you say this. Fernsey. Fernsey. And this is a two in one oscilloscope. And I do believe it does a lot more than that. We'll talk about that in just a minute. In the box, it comes with uh, an adapter. This is gonna be very important and probably a piece that I'll maybe lose someday. And it has a USB cable. Ooh, calibration probe, very cool. And this is what, a, yeah, one to 10X probe, very neat. And calibration port, excellent. Oh, and there's a second little adapter in there. Very cool. So let's see, this is the DSO TC2. And this guy, I was going to do a video on uh, a few days ago, but uh, at first I released this other tester and I figured let's just go ahead and uh, release that one first. So the tester I'm referring to is this guy, the Atlas. This is the DCA55. This is a component tester, so for semiconductors. And it works beautifully. It's very user-friendly. And because of its user-friendliness, that's one of the reasons I bought that one. But what you guys didn't know is that I also bought this one. How cool is that? It's pretty tiny too, um, but that's a good thing. But the other advantage to this guy is right here. You have a component tester here, right on the machine, which that's gonna be a huge plus. So let's go ahead and see what else comes in its box. Okay, so I have a USB cable. We have, uh, so this is gonna be, well, I guess you can use this for anything. Um, so it has a PWM, a DSO, and what is this one? It says in zero to 16 volt. But anyway, this plug will go between all three of them, positive and negative. And let's see, yep. So these here are component testing leads if I can get them out without breaking them. So the component testing leads, what you'll do is you'll end up plugging them in here and then you'll run your component test. The same thing that we did with the Atlas. But you can see how this is a much simpler setup. However, this guy can do some extra tests that the other one cannot. And wow, that booted kind of kind of quickly. So you can do a uh, MOS test or oscilloscope. Let's go ahead and go into oscilloscope. Okay. And it's a very legible little oscilloscope. Take a look at that. Looks pretty nice. And um, I would assume that, you know, this or this guy right here with that little special adapter that I was telling you guys about, that this is gonna go on here and now you can use it as a regular oscilloscope pretty neat. Um, the component testing is one of the things that I'm most curious about because if it can do a better job than the other one, um, I would love to see if this one can do curve traces. That would be pretty neat. Not sure if it can. I'll have to do some reading on it. Functionally, um, if you, let's see, menu, press and hold. All right. 
So one of the things that I, I do know is that when I, okay, so you hit the power button once, the user friendliness to a lot of these uh, Chinese type oscilloscopes, they're not very user friendly. You just have to learn your device and then you can operate it quite well. But you can see how small this thing is. I would say for a multimeter slash oscilloscope to fit in a cool little tool bag, this would be a, a pretty good gig and only like 60 to $70. That's also an inexpensive piece of test equipment. So we got Moz test oscilloscope. Let's go ahead and go into Moz test. And you can see it immediately wants to test something. So let's go ahead and set this guy up. So we'll put one in here. One in here. Mind you, I just unboxed it. I don't really know if this is gonna work the way I'm hoping. Okay, so we have all three of those in. And now let's go ahead and let's get a let's get a semiconductor. There's one. There's two. Let's go ahead and connect the third one up. Okay. So there's all three of my leads. Those are good hooks on those leads too. And let's go. You press and hold to run test. There we go. Testing. takes a little bit longer than the other one to test, but then again, I don't know what type of test it's doing. And take a look at this. How cool is that? It shows you a graphical representation of the chip that you are currently looking at. So I have 0.79 of an ohm, so that's a dead short. And the other one is 2.84 ohms. So that one is technically a short as well. Now the other one, the atlas this one just says short between this pin and that pin and it does give some outputs which is pretty neat but uh, I do like the fact that this one gives me a little bit more information let's see where are my other ones I have a bunch of chips here that we're gonna run through and take a look at now I know that you know these things can do a lot more stuff but this is one of the functions that I think I'm gonna use often enough on these is to check out chips to see what type of chip they are and if they're good or bad. Okay. Pause test. Okay. Wow, that was pretty quick. So this one here is a PE MOSFET and you can see all the status that it tells you. I love that. Pretty neat and it tells you what lead is on what color. I dig it. So I could probably use this more as a component tester than as a uh, than as a oscilloscope, even though I'm sure the oscilloscope is just fine. Now, some of these chips were unidentified with the, um, the Atlas. So this one here, it's interesting because it, it's giving me a little bit more information. Like it's telling me the, the impedance between the legs, which is pretty neat because instead of just saying like dead short, it's actually telling me <laughs> what they are, what's going on with them. Oh, come on. There we go. go so it's basically saying that that's a short can't really identify what the chip is it just knows between this lead and this lead it's a short so very cool stuff anyway I'm just happy that uh, it's working so well because at 60 some dollars I couldn't really say no to it I mean I really wish I would have had one of these component testers before because I've had some components where you can't even read what type of chip they are and sometimes manufacturers will scratch 
they'll scratch that information off. See, look at that. You can tell that that's a, a diode junction and yep, two diodes right there. Very cool. Well, you know, although in this video here, I'm only really going over one of the functions of this device, then we just release those. Um, it, it does have a lot more features and to be honest, I, I don't really, obviously I'm not even in my workshop, I'm at a desk, but I would love to be able to run through more of the things that it can do. So um, in the menus, uh, there's all the different settings. We can set up our functions. So it does do um, generator functions. So that's your PWM and we can set that up in here. PWM. See, I can set up the duty cycle and the frequency. Oh, we can test Zener diodes. And there's so much stuff that this guy can do. But anyway, guys, that is the DSO TC2. Just a quick look. I'm sure I'm going to use this in videos in the future. It does recharge with a USB-C. Thank goodness. So happy that they did that. It has a little kickstand. The kickstand places it at just the right viewing angle. See that? So for a piece of kit for 60 some dollars, guys, I would say that this is an easy win. <laughs> How cool is that? And I know I didn't even pull the tag off. So you can see the real display of how it's supposed to look. It's a beautiful display, by the way. It's a beautiful display. Okay. Take a look at that. Cool little oscilloscope. I love it, guys. Thanks for watching.